the Ryzen 7 800X 3D and Ryzen 7 700X, both Zen 4, both 8 cores and 16 threads, and both a Ryzen 7 on an AM5 socket. But how different are they really? By numbers, it would make sense that a 7800 outperforms a 7700, but then there's that 3D vCache. So let's compare them head to head in a variety of categories and determine which one is better for what. After the initial raw numbers comparison, we'll get into some pure synthetics, then into some rendering and encoding and finishing up with some actual gaming. So let's get to it. As far as weak requirements are concerned, it's pretty much the same thing. Both go into an AM5 socket, meaning it's DDR5 only. And the first level of specs is similar too, 8 cores, 16 threads, all running on a single CCD. But now we'll get into the fine print, because a 7700X is actually running slightly faster, where the 7800X 3D will be limited to a single boost clock of 5GHz and a base clock of 4.2, the 7700X can go faster at 5.4 boost and a 4.5GHz base clock. The funny thing, however, is their TDP. Officially, the 7800X pushes 120 watts, where the 7700X is only pushing 105 watts. And keep these numbers in mind, because they are a joke. TDP as in theoretic dumb prediction. But now, coming to the actual important difference, where the 7700X comes with the original 32 max of L3 cache, the 7800X 3D has a full-blown 96 megabytes thanks to them using that 3D cache stacking. Now, more cache is of course a good thing, or it can be, but it comes with a drawback of speed, which is probably why the 7800X is much slower on paper. But does that really change anything? Well, let's find out. Starting off with the first one of synthetics in form of Cinebash single core. With 1814 points, the 7800X 3D is quite significantly behind the 7700X at 1979. Allowing all cores to run, we are looking at roughly the same downgrade. Going from 19399 points down to 17906, the 7800X 3D does not look like an upgrade at all. With Cinebench done, this is the perfect moment to get some actual speed and power consumption numbers because we all know what a manufacturer wrote on the box is more hopes and dreams than actual reality. In Cinebench, one core, both the 7700X and 7800X 3D, managed to get to their advertised speed actually even slightly higher. At 5.5 GHz, the 7700X was running 100 MHz above spec, and at 5.05 GHz, the 7800X was running 50 MHz higher than it was supposed to. All of this is also quite reflected in their respective power consumption. 50 watts during a single core Cinebench run on the 7700X, and 33 watts for the 7800X 3D all making sense considering the difference in speed. For Cinebitch All Core, on the other hand, there it will be interesting. While the 7700X managed to keep an all boost clock of 5.25 GHz, the 7800X was only capable of doing 4.825 on all cores. However, while it's being in an all core boost load, the 7700X was burning up 136 watts total package power, while the 7800X 3D was only sitting at 84, a significant reduction. And this then brings us to the next mini category, power consumption. A 7800X consumes a lot less power, a lot. Of course, at a lower clock speed, but at the end of the video, you might also rethink if you really not need that clock speed. For the cooling, you might think too quick and believe that the 7800X 3D is a lot easier to cool thanks to the lower consumption. Well, think again. Because of the 3D cache, the 7800X 3D is rated to only run at up to 89 degrees C, whereas the 7700X can safely be pushed to the original 95. 
And that means that although a 7700X consumes a lot more, the 7800X3D needs to be pushed down a lot more. But if we quickly steal a couple of frames out of the how much cooling video, we can see that the list of potential candidates for a 7800X3D is a lot bigger. Pushing down less heat but further seems to be easier than more heat but not as cool. Anyway, no matter how you look at it, keeping a 7800X3D at below 89 degrees C is easier than a 7700X below 95 making the 7800X3D significantly easier to cool. And back to more synthetics, in 3D Mark CPU profile tests we can gradually see how each CPU performs with only a set number of threads. And going from one thread up to all 16, we can see that the 7800X3D is always between 11 and 14% behind the 7700X. Give or take a few percent, but always behind. On CPU-Z we can see roughly the same result. As seen in Cinebench, using only a single core we can see an 8% decline in performance which becomes 5 when all cores are concerned. For PC Mark, the decline looks just as bad with a CPU score of 4% behind the 7700X. It just doesn't look great for the 7800X 3D right now. But what about rendering and encoding? Or just editing workloads. Using the new Blender open data test we get three different scores for different scenes. However, in each and one of them the 7800X3D lost again and again and again against the 7700X. 2% in Monster, 4 in Junk Room and 6 in the Classroom. Wow, 2, 4, 6, what, what a nice set of numbers. For Handbrake we actually saw one of the biggest declines, where we transcoded a 5 minutes H.264 video into H.265 and where the 7700X needed only 579 seconds, the 7800X3D needed a full minute more at 641 seconds. As a last synthetic we have the new Corona 10 render test and again the same thing. At 6% less rays per second, the 7800X3D just doesn't make a lot of sense here. So far it's devastating, it truly is. Except for power consumption and temperature, the 7700X just whooped the 7800X3D's ass in every category. And here we have a nice graph to see how devastating it actually looks like across the whole board. So far this just doesn't look great. And it shouldn't look good. In the end it's the same architecture, same amount of cores and same amount of threads and the only two differences being a more or a different kind or setup of a 3 cache, something that doesn't reflect too well or at all in synthetics or just like work related workloads and a significant reduction in core speed. But the L3 cache does look good in gaming, except for CSGO. CSGO doesn't like 3D cache. Except for the 1% lows, the 7800X3D took a small hit to a big hit in all metrics with the 7800X3D averaging at 879 FPS where the 7700X averaged at 952 FPS in 1080p high settings. But except for CSGO, every other game really likes that additional cache. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider we saw an increase on everything. On average we got an increase of 25% and though slightly laughable, we got an increase of 308% in the 0.1% lows. But take that with a grain of salt, the 7700X just had one spot where it stuttered every goddamn time that we benchmarked it and thus there we are and it's 0.1% lows. It's like if the neighbor sneezes you have a 100 FPS difference. Over on Far Cry 6 we had the same level of increase. On average we saw 26% more frames but at the highs and lows also got a significant bump. For Rainbow Six Siege the average got only a slight bump but the 1 and 0.1% lows got quite the big increase. The only metric that fell was the max FPS. And as the last game we have Dota 2. There we saw by far the biggest update as far as average FPS is concerned. At more than 100 FPS gain the 7800X3D won with 42% more. In the 1% lows the gain was significantly smaller but plus 19% is still a crazy increase. 
So let's put all of these numbers of today into one big ass graph. As far as raw performance, as in synthetics or editing type workflows or cut or whatever, no, the 7800X3D is not a good choice over the 7700X. It lost on absolutely every metric. Sure, you could argue that it consumes less for a little hit, but that argument would only work if it performed roughly the same, but it has an, a hit on every metric. For games, however, there everything changed. Except for CSGO, which apparently just hates cash, every game won by a landslide. And now the argument works, because while playing, for example, Dota 2, the 7800X3D performs significantly better while consuming less, while being easier to cool. And that pretty much sums it up. If it is a work PC that you are building, multi-display office, editing, rendering, cut, whatever, then the 7700X is definitely the better choice. If, on the other hand, it is a gaming PC, and I mean just gaming, then 7800X3D hands down. It will perform a lot better, easier to cool, consume less. It is the perfect gaming CPU. The only problem with all of this, however, will be the price. At a hundred bucks more where I live, it's not a cheap upgrade. However, factor in smaller energy consumption and you can go with a smaller cooler, you don't need to spec out the case with high performance fans and so on, and in the end the difference might end up being slightly smaller on the whole package, but still, it costs a whopping 100 bucks more. But yeah, this is where we stand. If you are working, save the 100 bucks and go for the 7700X. If you are gaming, 7800X CD it is. Anyway, I think this should be all for today. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to get a fire extinguisher for the next time we fire up the 7700X. This thing runs way too hard. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at the video we did to determine how big of a cooler you need to run the 7800X3D in every scenario, just to be 100% sure. You will be surprised how small it can be. Hope to see you in the next one and bye bye.